And so now I've actually multiplied these two together that we talked about. Remember, A is the input-output matrix. Here it is. That describes the interrelationships between each sector, how much is required as an input for every sector compared to a given output of a sector. Recall that the X is really the uh, production matrix. So this little matrix here tells me, in the economy itself, how much of each sector is produced, right? This is how much steel is produced in the economy in that sector, how much food in that sector is, is produced, and how much labor is produced. When I multiply them together, I get the amount consumed by the, by the economy itself, right? So here, let's multiply this out. We know how to multiply matrices. 0 0.4 times S plus 0 times F plus 0.1 times L. So it's 0.4S plus 0.1L. Here it is. And we keep doing that all the way down. We get a 3 by 1 column matrix in the end. But again, this represents the amount that's required as an input for every one of the sectors, right? So in other words, for the steel sector, for this row, here's the steel sector, it requires 0.4 units times the amount of steel produced, right, uh, uh, present steel, plus it requires 0.1 times the total amount of labor available, right, total amount of labor produced. So this is the amount that has to be inputted back into the steel industry or the steel sector. And similarly for, for uh, labor and for food. Okay. And so that means, again, what this represents is the amount that the economy consumes by itself. So this is the amount that's required to pump back into the economy in order to produce and keep producing uh, so much production. Okay. And so if we can find out the difference between the total amount produced and the amount consumed, that clearly would give the excess amount of production in the economy. And that's the amount of goods and services that can be exported to other countries, clearly. Okay? That might be a very uh, interesting uh, thing to find out, is how much can actually be exported. All right? So think about this. It's just going to be the difference. So if we take uh, X, which is the amount produced totally by the economy. Again, we just take each sector. Here's X. And I subtract off the amount that's consumed by the overall economy. That's AX. This amount is going to give me the leftover, right? How much is left over after the economy has consumed what it needs to consume in order to keep producing, right? This is the leftover in some sense. So this is the net production. Again, when we say the word net, we mean uh, how much after we take into account uh, what's required to pump back into the economy. Okay? So this is the net production. After we, so the total amount produced by the economy minus the amount that has to be pumped back into the economy okay, in order to keep it running. And therefore, what's left over, again, is called the net production of the economy. And so now, once we have this idea, here is a basic input-output model. We can answer questions um, about this particular economy based on the information that we have. Okay, so provided we know information about how much of each uh, unit is required to keep producing more of that particular sector, we can get a pretty good idea of the net production of an economy. So now summarizing what we've talked about, we've created the net production. That is, again, if we talk about X being the pr production matrix, which is the total amount produced per each sector, uh, and we take away the consumption matrix. Remember, we talked about this as a consumption, which simply is the amount that each sector requires to produce one more unit for each sector. right? Uh, so if we take the total produced minus the total consumed, or the total amount, again, that the economy consumes by itself, then what's left over is, again, the net production. So that's the total amount left over that we can use to satisfy demand, for example. So again, once we have this very simple model so far, we can start asking and answering economically interesting questions based on this simple model. That is, uh, one of the things that comes up right away is there must be enough to satisfy, enough net production anyway, to satisfy the overall demand for a product. So for example, uh, certainly we can talk about the total amount that's used as an export in demand. But also, it could be as simple as how much is demanded within a country. 
So for example, if we're talking about Canada and about the agricultural uh, sector of the economy, part of that is food production, right? So there's a certain amount of demand within Canada for food. You have to feed your populace within your country. And so clearly we want to produce enough or plant enough of whatever crop to actually be able to feed the populace, to, to actually uh, meet the demand, at least be equal to the demand, right, for that. Otherwise, you, ha you have problems, certainly. Uh, we can also talk about meeting demand for, again, exports as well, but let's stay simple for right now and talk about demand within one country, for example. So again, what we're going to do is we can turn this m new matrix that I've created use this to actually put together a matrix equation finally. That's going to be the, the last uh, part of our model, our input-output model. And with that, we can actually start solving, solving uh, riddles, uh, answering questions, economic questions. So for example, again, if I'm talking about demand, I, I know that this must be enough to satisfy the demand. Demand is going to be a matrix also. We put this together into an equation like this. Right? The net production, x minus ax, that's the, the net amount that the economy is producing. That better be equal to the demand matrix. Right? It has to be enough to supply or to meet the demand exactly, at least. Right? If we can meet demand exactly, we're not producing too much um, of anything, and we are able to sell all of our product, whatever it is. Right? Maybe it's food or whatever. Okay? So, um, let's go ahead and do uh, an example with this particular equation. But here it is. Here it is. This is very interesting, right? This is the complete model right here. That is that um, I've created a matrix equation, a very simple matrix equation that can be used to describe uh, the output of an economy, okay? Supply and demand. Uh, by the way, one of the things I can do is simplify this expression just a little bit. In other words, just like real numbers, again, this is why we develop matrix equations to begin with, is we want to work with these things just like we do uh, regular linear equations. So one of the things we can see already is there's an extra x here and here. So just like um, real numbers, and because of the properties of matrices that we've developed in the past, we can actually, in some sense, factor out a matrix x. So we can write this as x multiplied by the quantity i minus a is equal to d. And then we can go ahead and we can actually solve this equation very easily. We've already talked about this before. If I take i minus a, that's a new matrix, right? That's a new matrix that's uh, the same size as a. Uh, so when I do this, when I, when I uh, actually uh, want to compute the, uh, the solution, that is the x, or the total amount that I should, I should produce, to actually meet demand, all I've got to do is find the inverse of this new matrix. And we know how to find matrix inverses. So therefore, the solution is going to be I multiply both sides on this side by the, by the uh, multiplicative inverse. So I'm going to have that x is going to be equal to d multiplied by, I should say, this is d. And I've got an, an identity over here is going to be equal to d multiplied by i minus a inverse. Okay, and I can solve all of the equations simultaneously at once. Okay, this, is, this is the general procedure of what we're going to do. And again, this just comes from what we talked about when we were um, actually developing matrix equations. Now we've just put it into a special context. Right? It has a context associated to it. That is, we're talking about an economy, and we're talking about demand and production of an economy. Okay, so let's go back to our original example with a very small economy with steel, food, and labor as the only sectors of the economy. And we're going to come up with um, a solution like this. Okay, and this same idea can be used for uh, any kind of uh, input output model for any size, certainly for any kind of economy. And you can see it has a lot of very interesting uh, applications to it.